Hello, and welcome to Notes of Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 42, X-Pages Application Layout Control. If you can lay out your clothes, why not lay out your app? Okay, before we get started and do anything else, and I wanted to do this last show on the Source Control show, because I knew that was going to be a big show, and I knew Source Control was, was, was kind of a, a topic near and dear. Uh, but I've got to say a huge, huge thank you to Maureen Leland. Um, Maureen Leland is uh, an, an IBMer, and uh, she's been the, I, I guess, the lead domino designer architect for the last 15 years. Um, I, I don't know her very well. I did uh, have the honor of, of having dinner with her and 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 Phil Riand in uh, at a conference once, which was a great time and Maureen has done a wonderful job with designer uh, it's come a long way from from where it used to be and and we've got a lot of great tools in there you know we've got source control now we've got you know all this great X pages goodness in there so it, it's it's a great product and by the way I use it every day on any one of, of a couple Macintoshes in my house so it really I technically does run on the Mac um, just not the way we want but that's for a story for another day. Um, so again, thank you, Maureen, for for all your efforts there. I'm, I'm sure I'm not speaking uh, just for me, but for others, that uh, that it is very much appreciated. Uh, Maureen is, uh, as far as I know, going on to Connections Land and, and doing something with with the Connections product, and I'm sure her contributions will be will be uh, as beneficial there as, as they have been to us. Uh, taking uh, Maureen's position as lead Domino designer. Uh, architect, I guess you'd call it, and, and forgive me if, if I'm getting some of the terms wrong, is Dan O'Connor. Uh, now, Dan O'Connor is, is a gentleman that I've had the pleasure to work fairly closely with the last several weeks, um, as he was uh, uh, instrumental in helping me do the cheat sheet, the new X-Pages cheat sheet on, on social controls. And again, he was basically the lead for that, along with uh, Phil Rion and, uh, and Nicholas Heidloff, and, and I just did the formatting. Uh, but Dan was, was a joy to work with, and I'm sure he's going to be bringing uh, a lot of good talent and, and ideas to Domino Designer, and, and I'm excited about the future. I'm, I'm sure there's some super secret board out there, whiteboard, with all the features that are coming into the product, and quite honestly, I can't wait till they get here. So, uh, so thanks, Maureen, and and congratulations, Dan, and and good luck to you, uh, and uh, hope to see your contributions to the product. Now, speaking of Dan, um, we've got this new breaking news section on Notes and Nine, which is probably the one and only time this is ever going to happen. Uh, but earlier today, uh, Per Loristein, uh, Per, um, who's a great X-Page developer himself, um, kind of broadcast out there that there's a new X-Pages book available. And Dan is actually one of the, the co-authors of there. So so we now have available the second X-Pages book, really, X-Pages Portable Command Guide. And it's written, for the most part, by the same team that did the last book with the addition of, of Dan O'Connor. And, and I'm not sure if Maury... Uh, Kehoe, who's who's an author, um, was on on the first book or not? I can't remember. And, and Tony McGuckin. Uh, now Marie skipped Lowe's Fair last year, so hopefully she won't do that uh, this year coming up. Anyway, so this book is available at Amazon in print and Kindle. Um, it's also on iBooks, uh, where I have already downloaded it for my iPad, um, and it's. Uh, I haven't really looked at it yet, but it's it really kind of goes into some of the some of the the nitty gritty of of like the the XSP like that JavaScript thing when you do like XSP dot partial refresh post or, or whatever it is. I, I don't use it a lot yet because I don't understand it, but hopefully the book will give me that understanding that I need. And and the properties files is in there, I believe. A lot of good detail in the properties files. Um, so if you are an X-Pager, which I, I assume you are, otherwise why would you be watching this? Um, you really want to kind of rush out and, and, and pick up this book, I think. Um, and again, I'll be talking more about that later, and we're going to try and get the authors on on the X-Cast podcast, which is the, the podcast I do with Paul Withers and uh, uh, Tim Clark. So, okay. Getting on with the show, uh, we have a new contributor today, and his name is Steve Pridemore. Uh, he's an independent consultant, and he's doing a lot, a lot of uh, really kind of neat X pages stuff, especially with the extension library. Now, the video that 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 you're about to see, he actually submitted that to me several weeks ago, and and I do this Dropbox thing with contributors and 
quite honestly, I forgot it was there. So I've been sitting on this for a little while, and and uh, I apologize to Steve for the delay in getting that out there. But this is going to be a great demo, I think, uh, on on using the application layout from the extension library. Um, he's doing kind of like some fancy things in there with with the buttons. I'm not sure myself yet how advanced or they are or or not but but it, it's it is worth watching that this new application layout control um kind of like is wizard oriented and and i think it's going to make it a lot easier to use things like one ui and, and one ui the new version 2.1 um so i i guess i will say there was a, a technical problem with the demo um where the 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 sound was out of sync with uh, the video and I, I did attempt to fix that by introducing uh, a small gap in the middle and then there's a small gap at the end um, so I think I got everything in sync um, but hopefully we'll get that nailed down uh, for any future contributions so with that being said uh, let's go to the demo okay let's get started here with the demonstration we're going to create a new database create a blank database and we're we'll go ahead and set the application properties we're going to use um, one UI v2 for our theme and we want to enable the extension library on the advanced tab okay we'll save that and since I'm demoing this on demoing this on local let's go ahead and fix the ACL so the default has manager access, so I can preview this. Okay, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the custom control that will contain the application layout. Call that on UI layout. Okay, from our extension library, we'll drag and drop the application layout control on there. We're going to go ahead and leave all of the areas enabled so we can show them to you while it's there. Okay, we'll start off with the banner. Um, let's add a logo. A JPEG here of, and it's a 9 logo. Okay, we'll add a couple of basic node application links just so that they have some text there. I'm not going to make them do anything. Just to, so the links will show up on the screen when we preview. So set them up for all of the different areas. Except the place bar. Although I do want to put a place name in here. So we're going to add those later. And for some reason, it already can has footer nodes. I don't know why they do that, but they do. Um, we'll add some legal text. And we'll just reuse that image in the footer as well for the legal. Okay, so now we have configured the application layout control. Now that control is going to be shared uh, across all of, all of the X pages that we do in this application. So that's, let's go ahead and give a, a navigator up on there real quick. Uses the same concept as the uh, the rest of the links in the One UI um, control. It's just basic nodes here. So we have some links. Okay. So since we're going to be building the place bar actions dynamically, uh, we're going to need to add to the custom control um, property definition, add a custom property here. I'm going to call that property. Um, call it links. Actions. Okay, now here's the key here is getting the proper data type. And we're going to use an abstract tree node. And we want to allow multiple instances. Okay, so now that will give the user of the control the ability to add place bar actions to the control. Unfortunately, it does not put the place bar actions on the place bar. So what we'll need to do there is in the after page load event is add some script that will read that property and actually add them to the place bar in the configuration. I've already got that code. I didn't want to 
typo it and not have it work for you, so I got it out here. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And basically just test if there is, is a place bar actions or not, and if there are, it goes through, gets a handle on, on the application layout, and gets a handle on the configuration from that, and then loops through and actually adds the individual place bar um, actions. It's pretty straightforward code. Um, it did take some digging to find the add place bar action method. I had to actually dig into the code of the um, the One UI um, the application layout control provided in the extension library to find that code. Okay, so we've got that. Um, to make this easier, I've also got um, some code that I found that um, will allow us to call server side actions from the client side. So I'm going to just bring that in as a script library. And this is all client side code, so we'll go to JavaScript. Okay. And I also have that copied out here so I don't mess it up. And we will include that as a resource here so that it's always available to any of the pages using the control, the custom control. Um, we'll also need to add an editable area so we have somewhere to put our content. Okay. So I believe that should be everything to make our custom control usable. So let's try to use it. So go over here, we'll add a new X page. Call it contact. This will be our document X page. So we'll go ahead and add a document data source. And I am not going to put a form in here. So what I will do is I'm going to go over to David's fake names database and use this form. We need to redo the work that he's already done. Okay, so we've got that. And here we have our one UI layout. We drag and drop onto the page here. If we look under custom properties, we can start adding the various kinds of um, of nodes. Since this is the contact form, I actually have the node the uh, the nodes that I want to add here copied out elsewhere. So let me go to the source and we'll just paste those in. Okay, so let me get my place bar actions. Copy those. And more. that in. Control shift F to reformat the text. Okay, so now I have those actions in place. But the, the code that I'm using in this in the um, Exxon server script library actually calls um, server side event handlers. And since we don't have any event handlers in here yet, let's go ahead and add those. Okay, and I have a different handler for each kind of event I'm going to do at the document level. So we'll add the event handlers, just stick them in down here at the bottom. Okay, so that's got our contact X page. Oh, almost. Um, next page we want to go back. Ooh, I don't have any place to go back to yet. So let's go back over here and we'll add the con text next page which will be a view so let's do custom control and our layout and a view because we're using David's database let's go back to the fake names database by name. 
I'll add some columns in here. That should be enough. Okay, now we're going to tell the view control to open with the contact form. And we need to, let's make that first column be a link. And we want to open it in read mode. Okay. And let's go ahead, go back to the layout here. We'll add an A place bar action for it as well. And we'll make it a page tree node. And here we'll say new contact. And to create a new contact, we just load the contact page. Okay, so save that. Go back to the contact page over here. Now that we have a success place to go to, we can go back to the contact view if we're successful. Well, uh, contact's X page. Okay, now save page. I think, which I think we've got everything in place. Let's give it a test. Okay. And notice we have our application links up here at the top left next to our logo. And our utility links in the top right. We have our title bar links tabs. <laughs> um, we have our navigator links. We have our place bar title and we have our place bar button, which creates a new contact. Oh, yeah, it'd help if I put a form in there. Let's do that. Cancel that. Let's go back to the contact page. We do have a data source. Design. Okay. Up a panel. Our facet. And then just do this the easy way and just drag and drop the entire set of fields over there. And it puts it in a nice little table. Unfortunately, the table that it generates is not one UI classes and everything put on in there for you. So you'd still have to go back and do that. Um, if I had a lot more time, we could go through and actually use the extension libraries. Um, uh, form, form layout controls, which are really nice. Um, maybe on another um, screencast we can do that. but. Uh, for today's, we just drop the entire table on there and let notes handle it for us. Okay, so let's go back to our preview. We open the document, and we do have a nice, lovely form there. We've got our legal text at the bottom with the with the uh, nice notes and nine logo. And there we go. We can click the edit button, cancel, takes us back to the view, a new contact. Uh, let's sort this to the top. Okay, let me save that. So, there's our new document. Bring that up there. We can edit that. Save that. I didn't put any validation on any of the fields or anything. Um, but as you notice, that the buttons are changing <laughs> based on the, on the X page that you're on. So, when we're on the contacts X page for the view, we have a new contact, and we actually open a document. We have edit, close, or delete in read mode. And if I switch to edit mode, we have save or cancel. Uh, and I'll go back and show you how those actually work. So what we're doing here, go to the contact, go out and select the layout, because that's where the pro custom properties are. OK, so here's the nodes that I pasted in. Uh, didn't want to type this because I would have surely messed up <laughs> the events. Um, the on-click event on on the basic leaf node executes on the on the client, so that's why we needed to use the um, the X on server command. The X S P execute on server um, takes the event handler ID, and then also in this instance we're passing in the application layout's ID. Um, and this calculates the client side ID so that it knows what element to refresh on the screen. Okay, so that actually does a, a partial refresh. Okay. So those are the four um, events that are out there. 
So and all of these work the same way. They just use the XSP dot execute on server that comes that's in the um, the script library. So all of those use that. Now let's look at the actual event handlers that are there as well. So I added a separate event handler for each type of action that I was going to do. Um, gave it a specific ID, gave it an event. Uh, normally that would be on click or on item click or, or whatever real event. But because we're actually calling it by ID, um, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, but if it's not there, it tends to complain. So I just put um, called by ID so as a note for me. And then give it the, the, um, the ID that I'm going to do, the, set the refresh mode, set the submit value, um, and pass in my action. And now the action is computed, uh, and all it does is set it to edit mode. Um, let me see one that does a little bit more. If we look at the delete. So here's one that does a little bit less. This is the save. It actually doesn't even have an action. Um, it's just based on the properties. You're doing a submit, the submit doing a save. <laughs> uh, that's all that it cares about, and it saves the document. Um, the cancel is the opposite, followed by a redirect. So it does a submit, does not save, and then redirects to the contact XSP. Uh, so. I found that this was actually a pretty nice way of dynamically generating the uh, place bar actions. And that's the demo. Thanks, Steve. I, I really appreciate it, and I, I, I hope you want to come back and, and give us some more information. I'm sure it's going to be very handy uh, to people out there. If you have any questions for me, here's my contact information, and I thank you for your time.